So by popular demand, we've been asked if we can produce a very high output drag racing supercharger kit for the Hayabusa. So we've got stuck in and we're going to use the Rotrex C38112, which is capable of flowing enough air for over 900 horsepower. And uh, we're well underway with the design. And this is where it's about. So we've got this mock-up engine. We worked out the pulley ratios, so we knocked out a couple of pulleys. Tooth belt, we're going to run a two inch wide tooth belt, Gates GT4 belt. We're running this same belt on the current supercharger kit, which is running the supercharger back here. Uh, but we're going from 30 mil wide to 50 mil wide because we're running this baby. So this is the C38 R112 and it flows about 80% more air than our street kit, which you know, as we've already seen, is making 500 plus brake on E85. So to run this baby in super street application, running either X98 or methanol with all the air it flows, then we can see the potential to run a big, big horsepower setup. So this was what we knocked together just to get a feel of where we needed it to be. And we're running an auto tensioner, so the tensioner is going to sit here. And this will take the shock loading out of the drivetrain and help keep things together in this extreme application. So the, this will bounce up and down if you hit the rev limiter, it'll take the shock loading out of the drive and hopefully keep it all together, stop breaking in, input shafts to the supercharger or drive shafts to, from the uh, engine. So that's the idea, that's where we are. And uh, we've been busy on CAD. Gavin's been busy on CAD. And this is the setup we've got. As you can see, try to get it in the right orientation. Yeah, one way or another. Well, we're going upside down. That's the back end. That's our existing alternator case, which we're using on the street kit. And we're going to modify that so that we can mount. There we go. We can mount the big supercharger here so that all this case is going to be CNC'd out of solid aluminium. Nice big bit of billet. Little bow tie belt guard to keep your fingers out. Auto tensioner. And we're going to run the oil tank for the supercharger built in to the bracket. So behind there is enough volume to run the supercharger oil. Filler cap's going to go in there. At the back of the plate is an outlet, uh, sorry, an inlet back from the supercharger. Oil's going to come out over here and go around to the inlet of the supercharger and then the oil returns back to, to just here. So we're well underway with it. So the next thing is cutting metal and we anticipate we'll have something in our hands by late January. Uh, it always takes time to get the prototype sorted out and in the meantime I might build something that we can put it on see what horsepower we can make pretty exciting times to do this obviously it's not for everyone there's a very limited market but I've been asked if I can produce it it was a challenge and I think we can do a good job so let's see what happens this year in the racetrack we've had a, a Mars Harley here for some months. I think he, it arrived around August time. And he had some lots of different things going on with it. It had all been built, but never run and never set up. And then when we got it, we found that the clutch wasn't operating properly. We had to wait for clutch parts. Got the clutch parts in, put some decent oil in it. We got some clutch um, action back. Uh, we put it on the dyno and you find that the exhaust system would melt the Clutch, uh, clutch cable, so that's exactly what he did. Before we knew it, we've got molten clutch cable, so the clutch didn't operate again. Then we ordered new clutch cable, but of course it wasn't the right one. We had to wait for the right one to turn up. The right clutch cable's in. Got it on the dyno yesterday. I'm not sure of the spec. I think it's a 128 motor with a cam of some description. I'm waiting for him to ring me so we can uh, confirm exactly what's in it. But we set it up with Woolwich Racing Software, with Twin Lambdas and uh, Auto Tune. And we've gone from 
I think it was around 128 foot pound of torque to, no, 120 foot pound of torque to 141. And up from, I'd like to say, 112 horsepower to 120. We'll have a look at the graph in a minute. Anyway, I'll show you what we've done. But basically, we've got a great gain throughout. And of course, it's not all about full throttle. We've fine-tuned the mapping right from idle, every throttle angle all the way from idle to red line, um, which takes quite a long time to do. You can spend hours and hours trying to fine-tune these babies. They, they take a lot of work. And even with Woolwich Racing and Auto Tune, it's not straightforward. Um, but we've got a great result. So that's ready for him to collect. So here's the before and after results of the Harley. Red horsepower is the way it came in. So it's looking at 113 horsepower at 5.1. And when we finish 119 horsepower at 4.9, we've gone from 132 foot pound of torque to 141. And as you can see, we've made nice gains throughout, got rid of dips and weaves in it. Nice fat torque curve as you get with these Harleys. Nicely done. And I'm sure it'll work really well for him. The other thing is obviously with the original bike, you've got speed limiters and RPM limiters. We've got rid of all of that. So he can go flat out to the red line in six gear. It's not going to start close to the throttle on him at the back top end of fourth, fifth and sixth. Um, so we get lots of enjoyment and lots of speed out of it. So like I say, a lot of work to get, the, to get a craft that good. We're looking at, you know, five, six hours work uh, because you're not talking about just full throttle horsepower. You're looking at all the intermediate horsepower, um, throttle angle range to get it sweet all the way through. So supercharged yet another big king. Um, it's been with us for a little while. Had lots of trouble with the dyno dropping out, uh, losing connection between the laptop and the load cell. And he eventually managed to get Susie from Dyna Pro up to, to see us and sort out the problem because we were pulling our hair out for weeks and weeks and weeks where it just wasn't working as it should. He came up to see us and now the dyno is spot on, working really well. So now I'm wading through the bike. So we've uh, recently done the Thruxton. We've just done um, the Harley. We've now got the Beaking to set up and this will be a nice job. And tomorrow morning, I shall be firing this up and setting it up. Uh, we've put a new exhaust system on it because speaking exhaust of rubbish. And uh, we've uh, re-engineered it so it fits with his original cans. He's got these two brothers uh, exhaust cans. So we've manufactured an exhaust system that comes up here. You can see it comes from there all the way around up through here. We utilized a couple of the original factory parts, but we've got a nice curve that will give him some decent horsepower gains. Quite a lot of work involved in doing that, but as you can see, it's a lovely pipe. Lots of volume in that, and hopefully we'll give him some good power. So watch this space on that one. So the kit car guys and the radical guys Many of them are running Hayabusa engines and many of them want superchargers. So we've looked at the Radical and we can modify our new street bike kit, which utilizes this bracket and the supercharger just here by putting an, instead of a counterclockwise supercharger there, we can put a clockwise supercharger here and run the belt run just the same. And we've got ourselves a really sweet radical stroke kit car supercharger conversion that I'm sure is going to be in big demand. So all I've got to do is finalize the spacer dimensions and it's pretty well ready to go because we've got these in stock, we've got the brackets in stock, we've got the pulleys in stock. So all I've got to do is make spacers and use the right length bolt to put the supercharger on this side away from the Radical's uh, gear dri drive train that runs along here, which of course with the supercharger over here would be in the way, so it won't fit there, but it will fit here. And the only thing in the way 
is a couple of water pipes which could be redirected quite simply. All the radicals exhaust system comes around here away from the supercharger. So this location is extremely good and very easy to fit on a radical. So in the new year, we'll be fitting this to a radical RS3, or SR3, should I say, a radical SR3. And we'll probably run a C3074 just to give it a nice increase, probably around 300 horsepower, or you could go up right up to C1394P, which would probably give around 400 horsepower. But you know, one of these engines in a car is getting a real hard time. It's on the money day in, day out. So running too much horsepower is gonna wear it out really quickly. You know, they're 1500s of regular refit times. Um, I think a 1300 with this supercharged kit could be more durable and give more power. Uh, than a 1500.